Hallelujah. Thank you all so very, very much. I'm so excited to be a part of this conference. I was able to tune in for just a little bit last night and what an awesome time that is. But I really want to bring greetings to the host pastors, to Minister Hall as president, your vice president, to Darius, to Shamika Thompson, the executives. Thank you, moderator. Um, thank you to all the other pastors and ministers, one and all around the world for having joined. I believe that the Lord has given me a prophetic word for this conference. I've been so praying and looking forward to this time. So let's get right into it. Please turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 28. And we want to read really quickly verses 1 through 2. Six. That's Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through to 6. And it reads thus. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang onto his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he have escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Now this is a women's conference and in keeping with the general theme, God's masterpiece and the sub-focus walking in the path that God has designed for you, I used for a sub-theme this morning the words, it should have killed you, but, now, right there where you are, if someone is close by you, turn to that person, or if you're by yourself, say to yourself, you may not realize it yet, but for what you've went through, it should have killed you, but, and even before I get started, how many this morning are willing to look back over your lives, and I'm willing to be honest enough to admit that had it not been for the grace of God, you would have been dead and gone a long time ago. Car wrecks, drug abuse, domestic violence, sickness and disease, and so many other ills have taken the lives of some of those that you know, but yet you are still here. And it wasn't because you did anything out of the ordinary. It wasn't because you were perfect and always did everything right. In fact, the truth is you actually deserve to die for all the wrong things that you've done, for all your shortcomings, for all the disobedience. You really deserve to die, but you didn't die. You really didn't deserve the mercies. And if you really wish to be honest, some of you can recall the fact you should have died in a car accident some time ago. Can we bless the Lord? You should have been the one spending your life behind prison walls. You should have been the one died of a broken heart. So many things should have killed you. And yet you are still here. There were even times when persons numbered your days because you came so close to death. Doctors at one point 
gave some of you over to die because they couldn't help you anymore. Yes, the enemy had set numerous traps to cut short your life. They prayed against you. They created mischief for you. They set poison for you to eat. They even worked witchcraft against you and it should have killed you. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. But for God's faithfulness, but for the path God designed for you, but for the fact that you are his masterpiece, it should have killed you, but God kept you alive. I wish that you would just shout it out aloud. It should have killed Hallelujah. you. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now, quickly stay with me. Stay with me. The backdrop to the passage of scripture that we read is that the apostle Paul was heading to Rome to face charges before Caesar and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. But a storm had blown him and the others all on board on course. Sometimes brethren, storms will blow us off course. Yes, unexpected tragedies will slow our progress down. They'll alter our plans and give us great frustration. Sometimes our best plans are often shattered by the circumstances of life and we find ourselves shipwrecked through no fault of our own. It was by God's divine intervention that Paul and the crew had made it through the storm safely. But now they had found themselves on a strange island. And let me pause right here to say, that a storm has a way of doing that to us. It has a way of taking us to a place where we've never been before. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Simply because God wants to do something extraordinary in our lives. Fortunate for Paul and the crew, the people on the island were hospitable. The people of the island had seen how cold and shivering Paul and the crew were. And so they decided to build a fire to make them warm. And Paul, being the obvious gentleman that he was, began assisting with the building of the fire by gathering sticks and laying them in the fire. And as Paul laid the sticks in the fire, a viper, a snake, which was hiding himself among the sticks, fastened itself onto Paul's hand. The apostle Paul was in the center of God's perfect will, yet he was attacked. And the point that I'm making right here is, just because you're going through adversities, the storms of life, the attacks of principalities and evil, it does not mean that you're not in God's perfect will. In fact, many times it's exactly the opposite. All along this road of life that we must travel, there will be pitfalls, there will be troubles, trials, tribulations, tests that we cannot avoid. Often time, we are caught up in the middle of a great struggle over which we have little or no control. And we have no other choice but to weather the storm and to wait for the water to come. And with that said, I need you to understand that nothing in the passage that we read is insignificant. The when of this event is significant. God had so orchestrated that after the storm, they would have been shipwrecked on the shore of this strange little island because we must come to realize that on the other side of the storm, God may not bring us to a resort paradise, but to a place where we can be a blessing to others. The where of this event was also significant. It was not by chance that they had landed on this island, an island of pagans who had never heard of Jesus. 
oftentimes we are so busy licking our scars and talking about the storm that we miss the real opportunity Hallelujah. to make a difference for God. And the water, what they did on this island was significant as well, down to the smallest detail. Somebody needs to know that for all that you've been through and all that you are going through and all that you will go through, it is significant and it will take you to your purpose. If you believe it, shout out a praise. And Hallelujah. But I want to make yeah. right here yeah. is yeah. that yeah. it was the fire, the fire that brought the serpent out. It brought out the viper, which tells us that the fire, the Holy Ghost fire, will always expose the enemy. Acts 28, verse 3 of the passage we read said, There came a viper out of the east. That old serpent, the devil, won't bother the church, won't bother the women of God, as long as it is cold and lifeless. But as soon as the Holy Ghost fire begins to stir, he will raise his ugly head to prevent it. The devil had hidden a viper into the woods to attack Paul, just as he hides a viper within the woods of our lives to attack the children of God. But if God be for you, who can be against you? The passage, brethren, goes on to say, how be it they looked. In other words, the people of the island began to watch. They anticipated. They waited to see what would have happened to Paul. You see, a venomous snake had bitten him. And if a venomous snake bites you, the result ought to be that your body becomes poisoned possibly stolen with eventual death. But can I pause to tell somebody that there are some people who are watching you who don't want you to make it. They are actually waiting and anticipating your downfall. They rejoice when they see you going through hardships and trials. They are watching and waiting to celebrate your downfall, to celebrate your breakdown, to celebrate your defeat, but they forgot that you are God's masterpiece and that God has already predestined your life. He has already predestined the path that you should take. And so nothing can happen to you unless God allows it. And if God allows it, he's going to work it out for your good. If you believe it, say thank you, Jesus, for working you, it out Jesus. for my good. Thank you, Jesus. No, brethren, yes, Paul Lord. should have mm -hmm. fallen. He should have fallen down dead suddenly. Medical science says mm -hmm. he should have died. Every legal advisor would have agreed that he should have died. Every natural circumstance suggest that he should not have made it. It should have killed him, yet it didn't. And this is what excites me about this passage, because I know that many of you who are watching today, many of you who have tuned in, the circumstances in your lives should have killed you. For all the mistreatment that you have had to endure, you should have ended up in a mental, in mental institution for all the aches and pain that have attacked your body. You should have been laid up in a hospital, mad at God and mad at the world. But God told me to tell you that everything is going to be all right because you're in the workmanship and he set you up to be a testimony. Have you forgotten that when the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, God didn't just part the waters, but he dried the ground that they walked on. So much so that when the children of Israel reached the other side, there wasn't even mud between their toes. For a little while, it had looked 
like the enemy was closing in on them and was going to overtake them, but they just kept on walking. And while they were walking, God was taking care of their enemies. While they were walking, their enemies were being drowned. Somebody needs to know that all you need to do is to just keep on walking. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It Amen. doesn't matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter what the doctors tell you. It doesn't matter what the rebellious child does or what the financial report says. This is not the time to sit and cry. This is the time to keep walking. And when God gets through blessing you, you won't even look like you've been through what you went through. The only evidence of you going through what you went through will be a greater faith, a greater love, a greater confidence, a greater commitment. Yes, you'll become a greater testimony. I know that some of you are going through the greatest fire of your life, and it's the kind that hurts, and it's the kind that makes you cry. But don't you dare forget who God created you to be. You are his chosen vessel. You are special. You're his masterpiece. And you're walking the path that God designed for you. And what I'm about to say may sound crazy, but what you ought to be doing right now is praising God that you made it to the fire. Paul made it to the fire. He had been in a storm. He survived the storm and then he made it to the fire. There are others that never made it to the fire. They died in the storm. You should be praising God that you're alive and well today, that you didn't die in the fiery storm of your life. Don't you remember the story of the three Hebrew boys? They made it to the fire and then they walked through the fire. And when they came out on the other side, the only evidence that they had been through the fire was that they were liberated from bondage. Do we have any liberated people in this conference today? The fire should have killed them, but it didn't. Listen to me, brethren. You know that it is a miracle that you have made it this far. Let's not pretend about it. It has been a rough season for many. From the onset of the pandemic, so much chaos has been happening in the lives of people. By all rights, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't have lived through that depression. You shouldn't have lived through the pandemic. So many persons died because of COVID-19. But we are alive and well today. We have lived because we are a testimony. Many are grieving. You may have lost loved ones to the pandemic. But rejoice that God has everything in his hand. You shouldn't have lived through the spousal abuse. You shouldn't have lived through the heart attack. Somebody else that I'm talking to. You shouldn't have lived through the stab wounds or the cancerous disease. You shouldn't have made it. Others didn't, but you did. You are in your right mind, serving God, filled with the Holy Ghost and power. And you want to dare complain because you're going through the fire. What you ought to be doing is praising God that you've made it thus far. Somebody needs to shout out, thank God I made it through the fire. Thank God I made it to this day. Thank God he kept me. He Man. kept me in my right mind. Yes. You may not have been the strongest one. Maybe you were not the smartest one, nor were you the most popular one. And chances are you weren't expected to make it. And there's no other explanation but God, especially with all that we've been through. Somebody needs to shout it out again. Thank God I made it. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. I made it. Amen. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, 
you are still, some of you are still in the middle of a fiery furnace this morning. And it is positive proof that you're coming out because the miracle started when you registered to attend this conference. If God wasn't going to bring you out, he would not have set you up to be a part of this conference. If you believe you are here by divine appointment, shout out, my miracle has started. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. In fact, you're a miracle already. Yes, I know some of you are still going through the greatest fire, the greatest storm. For somebody, it is a fire of sickness, a battle for your health. Somebody else may be going through the fire of divorce or marital problems or rebellion of children. But God wants you to know that something good is going to come out of what you're going through. I know right now that sounds like insanity because there is no visible, no tangible, physical evidence of anything good in the fire that you're going through. But I came to prophesy to you and to declare to you on the authority of God's word. Hallelujah. That it did not kill you before. It is not going to kill you now. You are going to make it in the Come name on. of Come Jesus. On. You are not going to be destroyed by a fiery storm. You are coming out out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't mean you're going to come out crawling on your hands and on your knees. The devil is a liar. You're coming out more blessed than before. It should have killed you, but you're coming out healed. You're coming out delivered. It should have killed you, but you're coming out with more money. The devil is a liar. You're coming out with joy. You're coming out with peace. Somebody may say, understand it because it feels like I'm fighting on a different level. It feels like the enemy is stronger than before. Well, that ought to tell you something. The devil wouldn't be bringing out his best if you weren't a threat to him. The fact that the devil is fighting you so hard should tell you that you are a threat to him and that you're getting closer to your destiny and closer to walking in your purpose. You are getting ready to step into a greater anointing, an anointing that you have never experienced before because the greater the hardship, the greater the struggle, the greater the opposition is the greater the anointing. And the devil might be trying to intimidate you and to make you back down. But if God be for you, he cannot, he will not win. If you understand that you're a miracle, shout it out, I'm a miracle. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. No breath Amen. and stay with me. Like Amen. the snake, the viper bit Paul. He could have called on others to come and see about him. He could have whined and complained, but he didn't. Instead, he took the responsibility of shaking the viper of himself mm -hmm. as women of God, mm -hmm. as men of God, mm -hmm. we need to learn how to take action yes. against the devil. You Amen. might not be Amen. able to control the snake, the viper jumping on you, but you do have a choice. You can choose how long you are mm -hmm. going to let it hang mm -hmm. on to you. Come on now. Listen, Thank brethren, you. because of what God has in for you. You can't let your issues stop you from progressing. You can't let your trials keep you from triumph. You can't let Hallelujah. keep you from your success. You can't let your attitude keep you from your anointing. God's hand is upon your life. Purpose is upon your life. Destiny 
is upon your life. If you believe it, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. The passage says that Paul shook off Bless his you, servant, Lord. This wasn't a little wimpy wave of the hand. With Paul word. saying, oh, word. come on, Mr. Yeah. Snake. This is not nice. Please get off me. That viper had actually attached itself to Paul so much so that Paul had to become violent and aggressive against it. Mm. And Paul shook it off into the fire so much so that the fire destroyed it. There are some things that you can pray about and ask God to take away. And then there are some things that you have to become violent and aggressive against. Come on. There are some things that you will have to shake loose. You will have to shake it like your life depends on it. Shake it off of you because your life does depend on it. Some things will attach itself to you in an attempt to destroy you. But God has already given you power, power over that thing. God has already given you the authority to overcome that thing. And so you need to allow a holy anger to rise up within you. Come on and now. know that you are a child of God. You are his masterpiece. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Brethren, it's time to get radical and shake yourselves loose from things that are trying to deceive you and rob you and make you lose the battle. I will play jokes with the enemy. Come on now. Time to entertain the devil. You need to shake yourselves loose from fear. Shake yourself loose from depression. The relationship you are in that you have no business being in. It's time to shake yourself loose from it. Because Amen. you are his masterpiece. Ooh. You are his workmanship. You will have to shake for your family. Shake for your health. Shake for your finances. Shake for your ministry. Too much is at stake. Many souls are waiting to hear your voice. Many souls are waiting to hear your testimony. There is something about shaking that activates the anointing. It was Samson who had said, I will go out at other times and shake myself. And this tells me that there was some physical action on Samson's part, some physical action oh, that was designed to signal the anointing yeah, mind, and the anointing came upon Samson one more time. I wonder if anybody here came to this conference for a new outpouring one more time, a new refreshing one more time, new move in God. One more time. Alleluia, one the more time. Was snake. The snake should have killed Paul. The people around him fully expected him to die, but he shook it off into the fire. And it was the Amen. fire that Praise destroyed God. the thing that was trying to kill Paul. Yes, the Lord. They yes, have Lord. unleashed some things against you yes. to destroy you, but it is not going to kill you. All that you need to do is turn up the heat by praising God. That which has been trying to destroy you, God is getting ready to destroy it by the Holy Ghost fire. So start praising God for your life. Praise him for your ministry. Praise him for your children. Praise him for your health. Praise God for your fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works, and that your soul knoweth right well. Brethren, God is your keeper. God is your shield and hiding place. God is your refuge and strength. He is your present help in times of trouble. 
There is no God like Jehovah. Praise him for his faithfulness. Praise him for his grace and mercy. Praise him for his loving kindness. Yes, there's no God like Jehovah. And that is why, although it should have killed you, it couldn't kill you because God is on your side. For the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? Hallelujah. The Lord Hallelujah. is the strength of your life. Who shall you be afraid of? My God. When the wicked then uh, your hear me enemies me my my upon you to eat up your flesh, my they God. stumble and fell. No war should no. rise against no. you. Your hearts shall not yeah, fear. Why you are his workmanship. There is no God like Jehovah. He is your rock. He is your peace. He is your guide. So fret not thyself because of evildoers. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Can you see it? They're going to wither away as green herb. Trust in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Commit your way. Get sold out to him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord. Stop the worrying. Stop the fussing. Rest in the Lord. Amen. Wait patiently for him. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. For the Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of coming. They shall be satisfied. Come on, if you believe it, praise him. For the steps Lord, of a Amen. good man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise yes, him Lord. Yes, and he delighteth in his mm. way. And though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. For the wicked shall not perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. If you believe it, shout it out. It's Hallelujah. Spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away. He passed away. And when he sought for him, he could not be found. It should have killed you, but it couldn't because God is on your side. If you believe it, praise him. If you believe it, worship him. If God has been good to you, magnify him. This time to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I made it. I thank you that no matter how hard the enemy fought, you never left me. He never forsake me, but he was with me. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. But it couldn't. It cannot. Amen. Because if God be for you, nobody, nobody can be against you. You are his masterpiece. Hallelujah. You are his workmanship. Hallelujah. His hand is upon your life. Thank you, Lord. You are a chosen generation. My God. You are his child, a peculiar person. You are a holy nation. God is for you. 
praise them, praise hallelujah. them, praise hallelujah. them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank for the enemy meant it for wonderful, evil. Wonderful, oh, wonderful. We thank yes. you, God. God. Yes. We thank you, God. Yes, we yes, thank yes. you, God, for working it out for our good. If you're a testimony, praise him. Hallelujah. If you're a testimony, Lord, praise Lord, him. Hallelujah. If you're a miracle, hallelujah. praise hallelujah. him. Come on, worship him. Thank God you. has been thank too you, good Jesus. to us. God has been Thank great you, to us. You, God has Thank been you, our everything. Thank Magnify you, him. Oh, He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. is worthy. He's Hallelujah. worthy to be praised. Glory. He's worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. I know what I'm talking about. I am a testimony. Oh, if I had time to share some of the things that I've been through, I shouldn't be here today, but for the grace and mercy of God. So Amen. when I speak into your life, I'm speaking from a place of experience. I know what it is to feel like, oh my God, this is it. But I also know what it is to have the hands of God rescue me, to have God embrace me, to have God deliver me, Amen. to have God make a way Hallelujah. where there seemed to have been no way. God bless Hallelujah. you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Know that this is a prophetic word to you. Amen. You Amen. shall live and declare the word Amen. of the Amen. Lord. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 H